have a good day. Hey, listen, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be reviewing for all of our viewers at home. We're going to be reviewing the final of this week. We're going to be going through all of the takedowns that we did, as well as some other drills too. So we got to get busy, all right? So continue position, please. Good position. Knees and knee. Ready. Two and second knee. Ready. And it's two to three. Two to three. And no, you complete victory. Always. Oh, complete it again. Integrity. Always. Oh, Devoted to excellence and steadfast love. Always. Oh, victory and defeat. Always. Oh, victory and success. Always. Oh, victory in life. And no, it's you. Good. All right. Here's what's going to be happening. Just like more here, please. And kind of step back over next to Zeus, please. Everybody pay attention, okay? So in these positions here, we have what is called the clinch, all right? When we close the clinch, that's where I'm closing up inside. Inside here, I have an underhook and I have an overhook, all right? On the overhook side, my head makes a lot of pressure here and I'm putting a lot of pressure inside. This underhook is holding, my overhook is holding, and I'm tight. Got three points of control here. Everybody see this? So I'm holding on the shoulder, head inside, squeezing here. When I really want to get a better position, I will take this hand and I've got to do this, it's called pummeling. I take my hand inside, I try to stick it inside Josiah's pocket, and now I have what's called double underhooks, yeah, well, all right? And then I'm able to come in and do my lifts, and takedowns and stuff, all right? While that's happening though, and I have to really hold a ton of space here, but it's kind of hard for me too because Josiah's got to have a small opportunity to pummel through himself. And now we end up on the other side. See? And it's equal. It's a 50 position over and under. So the side is going to pummel. Pummel. This is what we're doing. Everybody see this? We're not going like this. Right? We are working. Pummel, 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 pummel. Two point drill. Everybody understand? Right from here, we're going to go into what we call a single tie. A single collar tie. Look at my hand. Drives right up on top here. My elbow drives inside onto his chest, and my hand goes to the plumb of the head, and I pull his forehead to my shoulder. Single collar. Tie. It's super hard for Josiah to get his head up here. He can't do it by his head alone. He's going to take a step forward, and his hips are going to come forward, and when he does that, his whole body is straight to come. And then he peels my arm off with his hand, he comes inside, and he does his own single collar tie. Now, look, I'm going to try to lift my head. I can't lift my head, but when I step forward and watch my hips and do this, see my whole body, Jacob, makes it go up here. You understand? Everybody understand that? So when I'm coming up here, just like this. I know it's in front of a little bit. But I'm coming up like this. You guys understand? Once I'm here, this hand is inside here, Tori, and it's gonna push off and I grab here. So we go inside, single. Collar tie. Then we go to double collar tie. That means this is a single collar tie. That's double collar tie. Double hands. That would be a double collar tie. Moving we'll on, right? So I hold just like this. My elbows are together, and my hands are together here. So my elbows are pinching together like this, okay? And I'm controlling the side of his head. His forehead is on my chest. He's going to take both hands inside. Step forward, and one arm pops out. And then the other arm pops out. And then he pulls in. Same situation. If I try to lift my head here, I can't because I'm trying to lift Josiah. But when I step in and bring my hips, now it's my whole body straightening his arms. One hand comes in, the other hand comes in, and I have double collar tie. We go back and forth with that. Double collar tie. Everybody understand? Then we're going to go into what's called the arm drag. It's a little tricky. And this drill that we're doing is called spun surf. What it does for you is it introduces these concepts to you. I don't expect you to get them 100% today. We're going to put them on a timer. And you're going to do the best you can in the time you have. Everybody right understand? If you don't get it, you don't get it. It's not a big deal. Guess what? It's not the last time we're going to do this. Everybody right understand that? We'll just do this a lot, don't we? Okay, good. So when I go into arm drag, I go what we call a wrist control. So I go inside his arm, grab the wrist, and it goes across like this here, in front of my body. As I do that, this hand turns into a monkey grip, and I throw it into this arm, just like this. Once that happens, I let go of the wrist control, and this arm drags as I step forward, outside, and bring my shoulder to his shoulder. He puts his other hand up. I go wrist control, monkey grip, drag the arm, 
That is our step forward. That's why it's called an arm drag. All right, so it's going to go wrist control, grab and drag. It's going to go wrist control, grab and drag. And you can put the sand up here, wrist control, arm drag. Wrist control, arm drag. Then we do a thing called elbow control. Everybody do this with your hands. Like this, fingers, thumbs up. And what you're doing is taking your hands and pushing like this. The side goes inside my arm and he pushes my elbows. His goal is to get my elbows bent and his arm straight down. So I have to come inside and say, fight that. Fight that. I want to keep his arms bent. All right? He wants to get my arms bent. So it's called elbow control. You guys understand? Then we're going to go into one. There's two more. We're going to do one. It's called T Rex. T Rex is all about wrist control. But I don't want to do this, all right, Jacob? I don't want to come out and reach my hand out and grab his arm. Because once my arm is reached out here, what is stronger? My hand's being bent like my arm being bent like this or my arm being straight? Bent. Okay, so if I straighten my arm, John, I'm doing all your size work for him. He can hold my wrist and now he's got my arm straight. But if my arm's bent, he tries to grab my wrist and pull it. See, it's much stronger. And then I can come because he's got his arm straight. So when I go to grab his wrist, I want my hands to be here. Everybody see this? And then I grab and then I'm going to go. Now I can do two on one or one on one. He needs to break the grip. And he needs to grab my own. So it's not about just breaking the grip. And stepping back, I would rather break, break the grip, Pablo, look, and maintain my own grip. You see that, guys? Everybody understand? So come around and two on one. See how? See how I'm holding? Makes it hard for your side. That's the goal. So we're going to start. We're going to say two point drill. Start pumping. Single collar tie. Double collar tie. Arm drag. Guys, here we go. I'm gonna put it on a timer. And I want you guys to work, alright? Y'all ready to go? Are y'all ready to go? Yes, sir. Are y'all ready to go? Yes, sir. Go and go. Two-point drill. So at home, on this two-point drill, when you're pummeling, I want you to work. You can go through the motions of it, okay? Think about the underhook and overhook. Pummel through, underhook and overhook. Pummel through, underhook and overhook, okay? And then single collar tie. Just go through the motions of how to be able to work inside. Double collar tie, coming in, breaking through as well. The arm drag motion, all right? The arm drag motion, all right? Your elbow control. And these are drills that you could do all by yourself. Just imagine you have an opponent working with you as well, okay? And then, of course, the T-Rex drill coming in, trying to go for wrist control. If you have, of course, mom and dad to help you out, work with them or a sibling to help you out, that would be really cool too. Uh, on George or Guy, you can take your Guy and hang it over like a tree branch or something like that and you can start pulling, you can do things of that nature, working grist breaks. So there's a lot of things that you can do kind of option wise, but at least go through the motions on your own, right? During the whole time that we're drilling here, I want you to drill at home too, all right? We'll be right back. Let's go, here we go, single collar tie, let's go. Elbow in front, Pablo. Elbow in front, Tony. Hold this set forehead on your shoulder. Yeah. No, you want to be here, Pablo. Like this. Tony, that happens. He doesn't have to stick it down. Make sure he's just going to get it down. Both hands, guys. Holding on inside, buddy. Inside, inside. You need to put your elbow in front of his chest. Home. No elbow in front of his chest. Elbow in front of his chest. Okay, 
and he's working for a double A ticket, right? He's getting this position. Right the first thing that I need to do to stop that from happening is not let him grab my legs. So as I notice, as I notice that, as I notice, that, as I notice he's coming in to grab my legs, I need to get my legs back. Everybody understand? So when that happens, I want two hands to preferably be underneath. So when I do this, I'm going to, he's going to come in and I'm going to sprawl away with the forklift. Everybody understand? So I want my legs to go back and away. Is that understood? Everybody understand that? So if Josiah is down here like this here and he's going for my legs, I'm going to be on the sprawl. I'm going to go like this here and I'm going to sprawl. Everybody understand how that works? All right, see how my hands are underneath? And it's going to make it super hard for him to grab my legs. Everybody understand? Whoops. All right. If he comes in and I'm a little late, and he's able to get, but I can get my hand in between me and him here, and he still has my legs, I'm going to take my hands here, and I'm going to come inside, I'm going to sprawl the other way too. So I come inside, and I cross face, and I sprawl out this way. Everybody understand? So when I'm sprawling and I cross face, now guess what? Josiah can't what? Move. So my hips are down, and then I come around, back. and I work to the back, okay? Try not to sprawl too hard. I don't yeah. want to break Josiah now. Okay? So look. So that's the third one. The last one is if he's right here, I just take the head and I do what? Push it. And I push his head all the way down to the mat while I sprawl. Everybody understand? But look where my head is pushing, my hands pushing. Everybody see where I'm pushing? Push your head up. That's where I'm pushing. See that? Push it straight down on his head while I do what? Sprawl. Sprawl. And then I come around to the top. To the back. Because I want to be able to start working to control the back. Everybody understand that? Yes. Sir. All right, everybody understand? Yes. Sir. And I don't hop over to the back right here, like trying to get my hooks like this and go here because then end up falling over. See that? I don't want to lose the position. So my first thing to do when I get to the back is to secure this position and fold and pull his hips in. Everybody see this? And then I get my seat belt set up and then I'll start working to be able to get the back. Everybody understand? But I want to be able to hold this position first. So we have three sets of sprawls. The first one is what? The fourth? Flip. Fourth lift. Everybody understand? When I do that, my feet have got to come away. You guys understand? So when I'm inside here, I'm going to go out and poof. Everybody see what happened? Yes. That's how fast I scroll. And fourth one. And then from here, I'll take the back or I'll just abandon it and come back up again. All right? The second one is where I come inside. I have a cross face and the wizard. And what do I do on this one? Scroll. I scroll to the side right here. Everybody see that? See what's happening with my hips and my hand? And I cross face and then I come take the back, all right? The third one, I push on the head and sprawl. here I sprawl. Everybody understand? It's like that while I'm pushing the head down. Is that understood? Everybody understand? Yes, sir. All right, very good. So here's what I'm going to do. Get back with your friend again. Your friend's going to come in and try for a double leg takedown, really slow. You're going to stop it by doing those three sprawls. Do the fourth leg first, that means two under hooks. The second one, you have the cross face wizard. The third one, push the head down. All of them go to the back. And then you switch. Be kind to your friend. Everybody understand that? Because they're going to do it to you, and you're going to do it to them. Both of you are going to face and the kids. Let's go, guys. Do all three and switch. You're going to have only one minute to do all three. Let's go. And then we're going to switch. You know, one minute. Let's go. Double leg shoot sprawl. You just got double double one up. Sport leg. Back up again. Now you're going to cross face and wizard shoots. Wizard, your right hand's underneath his body too. Your right hand's underneath his body too. Now push the head too. Both hands, no, both hands push his head. Both hands push his head. Sprawl. There you go. Good. Now that right hand. This hand is Shove hands under the body. There you go. Now take it back. Move it back. Now the other 
person goes, and all three try to make them happen. So listen, at home, what we're going to be doing on this, you can find a ball, like one of those core balls, and you can actually use the core ball to be able to sprawl one. That means you put your hands on the ball as it comes in, and you sprawl down on it. I'll go grab one real quick and show you what I mean. So this is core ball, okay? And what I mean by strong, you got this. This is when I'm here. You can have your mom and dad be where your tie is, and they just throw the ball to you. And you sprawl, just like this here. You come back up, give it back to them, they throw it in, and sprawl, back up, okay? So you can do that, or you can use it on your own too as well, to be able to sprawl with. All right, that way you're not doing the sprawl on mom and dad because it's kind of uncomfortable to get sprawled on, right? Or your sister or brother. But you can practice on your own, or you can take the sprawl of the four ball if you have it all by yourself, throw it against the wall and it'll bounce back to you, and then you sprawl on it as well, right? So a lot of different ways you can practice this at home, but go through the whole time while this is happening and do it on your own, all right? Let's switch it up, guys. small for me because it's designed for the lunch right here, okay? But for me it's like my legs are much longer. But I can still kind of make it work to show you. So what I mean by this is that if I'm here, that means this foot's on the bed, right? It's going to end up on the bed. This foot's here and I take a step. And then my knee goes to the orange, right? But when I take this first step here, I do it with a level change. See that? So I take the step, level change, and goes onto the orange and then I take a step onto the bed. Let's see if we can try that. And you can see if really so small. So he's right there on the red and white, right? So he takes a step and level change, puts his knee on the orange and then steps forward onto the bed. You guys see how that works? And so if you could take a mental picture of this like I would with my phone, like and I see the tape in there to remind you. You mentally take that picture so you can understand what your feet are doing every single time that you do a shot. Doesn't matter what type of shot or what it is, for whatever reason. The shot it always involves the movement, the level change, and then the shot, the penetration step, right? So I come in, the level change, penetration step, and then I go into the shot, right? Everybody understand? You notice that even with 
Caleb with his foot here when he put his knee down and passed the knee, right? Please come over here and try to start. So he takes a step, level change, and now he puts his knee down. That's more about where Mason, where Mason's legs are. Does that make sense? Right? The reason I put the tape is so that way when the knee goes down, you understand your foot has to stay on that tape. Then he takes a step forward while he's in that position, and then he comes up or finishes the shape of the takedown, whatever it is. Does that make sense, guys? Uh, you notice here when I do this, if I take a step, a you know, step, and put my knee down, look how far out the knee goes. See that? And then I take this step here, and I'm like, whoop, come way beyond. And that's why it's set up for the kids. But I want you to understand what you're trying to accomplish with that. Everybody understand? All right? So we talked about different positions here. So we did this week, one, two, three, four, five takedowns off of that one shot. You guys understand? And the way it worked, I'm not going to take you down right now, but look. The way it worked was when I came inside, I did a penetration step and level change, and my knee went down, and then the first one was straight back. The second one was lifted. Third one was coming forward and coming in on an angle this way. The fourth one was changing my base and going sideways. The fifth one was changing my base, circling all the way around, coming from the back. Okay? Really? You did all that? Yeah, we did. So the first one was right inside here. Pay attention, please. I shoot, and I go straight forward here. Drop down, come off to the side. The second one, the second one was coming inside, and then I step, and then I lift. steps back. Look, go over the other. Now my hand can't reach. So I put my knee down and I change my hand position and all of a sudden I can reach both of his legs and then I push him sideways and he goes down. Side leg first. Right? The fifth one is when I go to do that and he steps even further back and I just turn around and see he's already ready to fall down. As I come back, Second, third, fourth, and fifth. Ready, Caleb? Yes. Ready to take a trip? Right. Hello, Caleb. See how you look there. Welcome to uh, Delta Airlines. You ready to take a flight? I'm going to train. I have five I'm flights today. Train. Five flights. First flight's going to fly back. Okay. Second flight's going to put you. Lifting off to the side. Ready for that lift off? It's going to be a pleasant flight. Third flight's going to be on the angle. You see how you take that. The third flight's going to be side flight. It's a side leg blast. It's a blast. You can fly on the glass. And the last one's going to be a uh, dash, yeah. right? You ready for your lights? Awesome. Can you ready to sign up for this? All right, here we go. Ready? We're going to go inside. First one is a double leg takedown. Guys, pay attention. I come here, level change, shoot, push, here, off to the side. 
second one. So here, I'm going to do what? Lift. So I'll change my level here. And point down you go. Okay? Third one. So he steps back. There you go. I come inside here. And then single. Alright, you guys see it? Fourth one. So when I do the double and he steps back on the double. one you're most comfortable. Okay, home. Think about it, Nace. First, second, third, fourth, fifth. Double leg, lifting double leg, single leg, side leg, or back. Really? I think you, you might be trying to double leg first, okay? Now, because this one we do all week. We do it every single day. Tori? That's what I thought. Okay, first and second. All right, cool. The question was, which one are you the most comfortable? Like which one is the best one that you can do? Double leg, single leg, a lifting double leg, side leg blast, we're coming around the back. First one. All right, good. So you're going to go back with your friend. Listen, guys, go back to the groups you're in, Mason, you with Coleman, and uh, James, all right? Jacob, come here with Kayla, John, come here with Zeus, Pablo, and Tori. One and switch, one and switch, one and switch, one and switch, one and switch. If you just do the one, same one over and over again, that is fine. That's what you know. Make sure you go through the ones you know. Everybody understand? Everybody got it? Yes. All right, back to the party. You guys help each other out. It's review time. It is review time. So, it is review time, okay? And so, we're going to go through all five that we have done, okay? All five. So, the first one is the double leg straight through. Second one is the lifting double leg. The third one is going to be the single leg. The fourth one is the side leg blast. And then the fifth one is coming around the back, right? I'm going to grab somebody. I'm going to show them to you really quick. That way you can go through and you can practice on your own, okay? Let's see. Uh, okay, come over here, please. Mace, I want you to go over here with uh, Jacob, please, right? Okay, go over here with that. So everybody watch. Caleb and I are going to do this straight forward, okay? This is Caleb. Jacob and Mace. Okay. So, the first double leg, notice he's facing me. He's going to go straight back on this one. I'm not going to go super fast. But I'm here, I change my level and penetration step at the same time. And my knee comes in on the shot. I put my head right next to his stomach. Both hands come down. I step forward as I push and I pull. And then once I'm down, I drop my shoulder down. And then I come off to the side. Or I'm going to hop off to the side here. All right? So I'm finishing all the way to the side here. Second thing that we have here. 
is I'm going to be a lifting double. So watch, I'm going to actually come in this way. So you can see what I'm doing in the case of you. You're going to see it take off this way. So I'm here. I change my level, take my penetration step. My knee comes in. My head's right into the side. I take a step forward and I lift with this leg. And then I push. And he goes down this way. And then, of course, I can pass side forward go down with it. Okay? Third one. Going to go on this side over here. So you can notice now if he stepped back with that right foot, he's in a stance, right? So that foot's back really far. I can't grab the double. So I'm just going to hit an angle. So I change my level, penetration step. Now my head goes inside like this. And I'm going to hold his ankle while I push on his knees. Right here. So it's a straight outside single. The fourth one, I'm going to go to the side again. So as I shoot into the double, penetration step, step, I go to grab, he steps back with this leg. So all of a sudden, so all of a sudden now, you see I can't release the leg. So what I do here, I take this knee here, I'm going to drop it, and I challenge, and now all of a sudden I can reach both legs. So I put my head to the front, right here, and I'm going to push and pull, and I'm go down to the side, right? The last one. Now watch, you're going to see me circle around on this one. So I come here, I change the level, I come around, and then I catch this leg, and now I'm just going to push a little bit while I lift. He could stay up here, right? But if I push down while I lift, he's going to lose his balance. And he can put his hands on the back and not fall, don't fall. He can still be right there. Once I grab both legs and then I walk down and I push him forward, that's what's going to take him there. Okay? Thanks, Caleb. I say thank you, Caleb. See ya. I go on. Yeah. So it's five. And all it's doing is dealing with the principle of understanding that I'm shooting in. And that shot, along with the level change, penetration step shot, can have different options depending on what the person does. All right, a shot can be for a lot of different reasons. We can shoot into a, it's called a high crotch. We can shoot into an outside. We can shoot in for a lot of reasons, right? But today we just did five basic throws. The first one was going straight in and through. The second one was going in and lifting on an angle. The third one was coming in on an angle for a single leg. The fourth was coming in and then turning the angle and going sideways to reach the leg. And the last one was coming in, spinning around, and then pushing back this way, right? And so all of them give us the option to be able to finish in different ways. And so it was the straight head, straight single, basic, uh, straight double. It was the lifting double, cutting the angle. It was the single leg. It was the side leg blast. And then it was coming around the back, right, or back side double. So those are the five ways that you can do this. Practice those. You can practice those again on your note, your buddy. You can practice those with your sibling. And hold on just a second. Mason, Coleman, and James, what are y'all doing? What are y'all doing? If I ask everybody on the Google Classroom what you're doing, they're going to say, you're right, exactly. They were just running around in circles over there messing around. Burning time. Taking time away from drilling. So running around circles and pushing is not the technique. Understood? Now the time that you should have been drilling, you were taking away by running around in circles. Also, now you're taking the time for me to have to explain why you shouldn't be doing that. You've lost a very precious amount of time because guess what? We can't go back and get that time back. You can give me a billion dollars. Buy me a new car, and I can't go back and get that time back for you. You understand? It's gone. Is that understood? Take advantage of the time you have. Practice is real proper. See how I handle that? That was fun stuff, right? So listen, I want you to drill. Take advantage of the time. You heard why, right? Because time, of course, is a very finite thing. It's not infinite. It's limited. You cannot get it back. Once it's gone, it is gone. So take advantage of this time, drill, practice, try to make it better, and then we're going to wrap it up uh, at the end of the class. We'll be back in just a moment. Keep working.
Guys, everybody up over here, please. First side of your friends, say hello. Thank you very much. I right, pay attention, guys, really quick. All right, concept, really quick. John, come over here, buddy. John's a big guy, all right? So watch here. I want you to pay attention to something, John. Pay attention. Turn and face the camera there, okay? Let me see your leg. No lift it up. I want you to stay up. Don't fall down, okay? Don't fall down. So, so look, I'm pushing and I'm not changing the amount of pressure. Am I changing the amount of pressure at all, John? Look, is he falling? Are you falling? Look, I'm not going to change the amount of pressure. I'm just going to change the direction. All I did was change the direction. That's it. So come in here one more time. And now watch. He's gonna, I'm going to go fast on the direction change so he doesn't even hop. I'm pushing, pulling. Just changing the direction. What direction did I go, John? I was pushing to the side. Don't face here. So I was pushing this way. And then where did I push? That's right, I push backwards, okay? We call that a dead angle, all right? That's one reason. The other reason, the way the body is made, it can't hold its position there because I'm pushing on the hip, pulling on the leg and making it straight. And it's causing a dynamic shift in the balance. And we're going against a way there's no base. When you push it sideways on them, there's base. That's why when I do that side leg blast, how many legs am I having to grab? Two. Two, I have to grab both of them full blow to block them because he has more base going that way. But when I go back this way against his leg, there's nothing behind him. And that is why it's easy to take them down, all right? Especially off the single leg and the double leg. The single actually is a little bit easier if I have the good angle. The double is easier because I have both legs. It's harder for him to move back, all right? But the concept is the same. Blocking the feet, that's why we don't want to grab where? We don't want to grab behind the thighs too much or even the knees too much. We want to try to get as low as we can. I'm not saying we don't do that sometimes. Sometimes that's the only way we can do it, and we'll finish the double leg a different way. But the most success we're going to have is when we get low and we push here and we're very close to our frame. So they can't make any what? Space. 
space. And that's what a sprawl does. It creates a lot of what really fast? Space. Space, very fast. You guys understand? All right, so come close really quick. Really quick, come up here. So this, what's really good about this season we're in, you guys came in at a very unique time. Because our class structure is a little bit different most of the time. Most of the time, we come in, we do 10 minutes of warm up, we do about 15 minutes of drilling, and then we actually had to take about 20 minutes to spar and roll. You guys understand? Something like that. Most, sometimes we drill longer, sometimes we spar. Depends on what we're trying to accomplish, okay? Right now, we're not able to spar a free roll too much. Does that make sense? So we're having to drill actually a little bit more. So at home, when we, when we weren't even able to come to class here, you had to work by yourself. Richard at home, right? right? With his grappling dummy. Who's Richard? His grappling dummy. It's George. Mine's George since Richard, right? And so does it. Who's yours? Mine is, uh, mine is blue bunny. Blue bunny. Okay, so he works a blue bunny. Oh, and don't you buddy on There you go. There you go. All right. So listen, you have all these things that we work, right? And of course, Tori and Pablo got to work with each other. That was a really cool thing. But they drilled solo drills all the time, right? This time, what we have is we're really forced to drill the technique a lot. And that gives you a really big, deep understanding of what you're trying to do. We can show you some stuff and get you out there rolling. That's a lot of fun. Don't get me wrong. But it's more fun when you're doing it and you know what you're doing. You understand what it is to find out. Rather than just going out there and rolling around and getting choked and getting humble. Right? So we want you to understand what you're doing. And that's a really good season of it. You guys understand? So there's always principles behind what we do and purpose behind what we do. You don't ever just do anything, right? Because if you just do anything, then anything can happen. I don't want to say never, because there are times when you do that. It's like, hey, it's three days, let's just see what happens. Let's just go with go, go to anything. But most of the time, we do stuff with purpose, and we do it on purpose. So that way, the purpose that we're doing it with, the purpose that we're doing it on, is going to produce what we thought that it would produce. If you want to succeed in life, if you want to succeed in your goals and do those things, and accomplish those things, if you want something very specific to happen, then there's something very specific that you have to do. Does that make sense, guys? So that's why we want you to focus on those things. Focus on the specifics, focus on the details, make it happen, and when you do that, what you want to have accomplished, it can be accomplished. Is that understood, guys? Yes, sir. Part of that, of course, is understanding. Okay, and that's why I wanted you to feel what was happening. Okay? All right, so this week we've worked what? Shot. And then out of that one shot, we have many different techniques. Five different techniques. And then we cover the small, all right, with the four flips. Cross face and wizard and pushing the head, and then what else do we cover? We cover the clinch. Just, just bare. Scratch the surface. And then, and then barely a, a, a single double. Right? Very, all right, that's it. Hard to punch. Okay? All right, very good. All right, back in the march, guys. Really good job. All right, guys, make sure you train it over the weekend. Like I said, this is our last Google Mac Connection class, so it's been fun being able to do that. We're going to send you guys the links, okay, to all the classes. We have another set that's going out for the last chance to be able to get that, so you can get your two classes in on average per week to get your free private lesson in. I already did one of my free private, free, not free privates, free privates, and we're going to be following through on that to get everybody in here. I got a lot of free privates I got to do, and so I'll be following up with you guys to make that happen. Don't forget about our kids challenge for the I'm and May was Eric, and we're going to be following through with that as well. Get this training in. We'll follow up. Don't forget, live life on purpose and never quit. Very good, never quit. Very good. 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 Good.